two buffaloes dolphins, you're looking at about a thousand pound animal. You get some 20 feet out of the air, or 20 feet out of the water, up into the air, it takes a whole lot of work. But it's also a capable of observation. This is the primary use of the natural environment. It's allowed us to jump out and find populations of other dolphins, find populations of prey items, keep an eye on the shoreline, but also look out for predators. Yes, dolphins do have predators. There's what is caught, which is in the ocean. However, they're not what we consider to be a true apex predator. That actually falls to the largest species of dolphin in the world. Modern world dolphins have to worry about a lot of things that are out in the ocean. They have to worry about large species of sharks like white, gold, and tigers. But also, those things. Like a blue football. Now, over on the far right side, or my right side, one of our trainers has a funnel, a hose, and is pouring some stuff into it. Looks kind of weird, right? Believe it or not, we're actually just giving one of our dolphins some additional water. Bottomless dolphins do get all the water they need to survive from the foods that they eat. However, just like us, in additional cups of water, they're going to be able to survive for the rest of their life. So we take sure that we are giving them enough water so that they can survive for the rest of their life. Now, I'm going to show you guys something that I found that I think is really cool. Now, this is the Great Lakes Marine Park. This is where the Great Lakes Marine Park is located. And this is where the Great Lakes Marine Park is located. And this is where the Great Lakes Marine Park is located. And this is where the Great Lakes Marine Park is located. And this is where the Great Lakes Marine Park is located. And this is where the Great Lakes Marine Park is located. Now while we're talking a little bit about food and everything, Bottomless Dolphins out there in the natural environment actually rely on a bunch of different types of food. Typically upwards of around 60 is the most commonly accepted uh, number that scientists can agree on. And how dolphins spread all the food items are. Because yes, dolphins eat fish, right? So what kinds of fish? Well, they're going to eat small fish, like sardines, tapeworms, smells. They're going to eat larger fish, like small fish. They'll even eat several pots, like squid, octopus, crustaceans, like shrimp, crab, lobster, and even a family of animals called condorcines. Condorcines are carpet-based fish. They know what to do. They can see eating not only stingrays, but sharks as well. Now, a lot of those are going to have to be more sharks. So that's why you have to do more sharks. I guess some white shirt, greater and scallop hammers, nothing like that. But they still have to have smaller species of sharks. Things like white spotted bamboo, brown bay, the bamboo shark, apple-like sharks, small cat sharks, and the smallest species of sharks. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a whole lot of fish you're eating. But here at the Mars, we actually rely on a little bit different combination of food. We'll use anything from hairy, paper, smelt, and even small squids. And what's really cool is every single one of the fish in our bag serves its own food value. Now, over here, oh, I think we have a jump on. There we go. But over here, we have a chair that's just walking around in his black thing, putting it on the back of the chest. Certain dolphins staring at one of them right now are known for 
sliding up and grabbing onto it. Yeah. And just like ripping it away from the camera. Like, it's mine We're going to actually see a lot of different things, especially with the guys we have here. We'll use some of those fish as a great source of protein and power. It's very nice, great source of them all. Thank you, Karen, out to the center of Habitat. Thank you, Karen, out to the center of Habitat. But all the other fish, the pink ones, the smoke, and the spring, are a little bit more like the fruits and vegetables that they have. This is where the, the, this is where the oils and the water comes in and the vitamins come from. But we studied these animals a lot. We've learned about things. We've interacted with them. And the biggest thing we've learned is the fact that their ocean is changing and not for the better. The more our population increases, the more of an impact we have on them on a day-to-day -day basis. But by making sure we remember things as simple as remembering those three R's, we used to use and recycle, because we're going to create a much safer and a much healthier environment for all these animals to follow home. Now, if you ever have the opportunity to go out and see wild game mammals like one of those dolphins, take those opportunities because it's really cool. But instead of trying to swim with them, touch them, feed them, or interact with them, what we really want to encourage you to do is pull out your phones and cameras, take a step back, and observe and admire. Here in the United States, though, we even have laws that protect wild game mammals. So if you see one of those dolphins, see a sea lion, or whatever in your area, again, get excited because that's cool, but take that step back so you can observe, admire, and learn as much as you can as we share our homework. But it does look like this training session is coming to an end. Oh, no, However, no, just no, because no, this no, session no. is ending, it doesn't mean... Really... Okay, change of plans. Heads up. If you are over that corner and you don't want to get wet, move. Much further than that. Gracias. 